Macromolecules. What are macromolecules? Macromolecules are large organic molecules with biological importance. What makes a molecule organic? It's when the molecule is carbon-based. Carbon is an element with four valence electrons, meaning there are four electrons in its outer shell. Carbon likes to bond with other atoms using covalent bonds. Macromolecules are polymers made of many repeating units called monomers. For example, each circle here would represent a monomer, and each line connecting the monomers are bonds holding them together. Altogether, this chain is a polymer, and these chains of polymers, ranging from one to two to three to many, make up macromolecules. There are two reactions involving macromolecules, dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. Dehydration synthesis links monomers by forming a covalent bond and removing a water molecule. So here are two monomers bonded with a hydrogen at one end and a hydroxyl group at the other end. In this reaction, what would happen is the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen would come together and they would form a water molecule. And this works because water is two hydrogens and one oxygen. And here you can see two hydrogens and one oxygen. Then the water leaves. And now a new chain is formed looking something like this. So now you can see a new covalent bond where this hydroxyl group and a hydrogen once was. In hydrolysis, a covalent bond between two monomers is broken by adding water. So here are two monomers linked by a covalent bond. In this reaction, what would happen is water would be added in the, into the covalent bond, breaking it apart. And then the water would split into a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen. And the hydroxyl group would go with one monomer and the hydrogen would go with another monomer. So it would look something like this. With one monomer bonded to the hydroxyl group and then the other monomer bonded to the hydrogen. Those are the two reactions involving macromolecules. There are four groups of macromolecules. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. First I'm going to focus on carbohydrates, also called carbs. The monomer of carbohydrates is called a simple sugar or a monosaccharide. They're both the same thing. There are three categories of carbs monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides are made of one simple sugar, for example, glucose or fructose, and their function is quick energy. Disaccharides are made of two simple sugars, for example, maltose or sucrose, and their function is also quick energy. Polysaccharides are made of many simple sugars, and there are four kinds of polysaccharides, starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. Starch is energy storage in plants. Glycogen is energy storage in animals. Cellulose is the structural molecule in plant cell walls. And chitin is the structural molecule in insects exoskeletons. The second type of macromolecules are called lipids. Lipids are hydrophobic, meaning they don't like water. Lipids are also nonpolar. Most lipids have a monomer of fatty acid, which is a long hydrocarbon chain with a carboxyl group on one end. As you can see, the fatty acid chains have carbon to hydrogen bonds, which are nonpolar and covalent. There are three categories of lipids, triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids. Triglycerides are three fatty acid chains attached to a three carbon glycerol molecule. Its function is energy storage. For example, fats and oils are triglycerides. There are two types of fatty acids, saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are all single bonds, which allow for molecules to pack tightly, and so they are solid, such as animal fat. Unsaturated fatty acids have a double or triple bond in their chain, which makes a kink in the chain and it keeps the molecules farther apart so they're liquid, such as oil. 
Phospholipids are two fatty acid chains attached to a three carbon glycerol molecule and a phosphate group. Their function is membranes. They make up membranes. This is a very simplified drawing of a phospholipid. Here's the head and here are the two tails. The head represents the two fat I mean the head represents the three carbon glycerol molecule and the phosphate group. And the tails represent the two fatty acid chains. The head is hydrophilic, meaning it likes water, and the tails are hydrophobic, meaning they don't like water. Together, the phospholipids form a phospholipid bilayer to minimize repulsions between water and the fatty acid chains. Basically, what that means is that the phospholipids come together in a way that makes the heads touch the water and the tails not touch the water. And this is what a membrane looks like. It's a phosphate phospholipid bilayer. All membranes are made of phospholipid bilayers. Steroids have no fatty acid monomers and they're only grouped with lipids because they are nonpolar. Their structure is four rings and their function is hormones such as estrogen, testosterone, or cholesterol. Those are the three categories of lipids. Proteins are the third type of macromolecule. Its monomer is called an amino acid, and there are 20 different types of amino acids. The structure of proteins is a central carbon, amino group, carboxyl group, hydrogen, and a rest group. There are 20 different rest groups possible, and they differ from protein to protein. A peptide bond is formed during a dehydration synthesis reaction between two monomers. A peptide bond holds two amino acids together. A protein is a polypeptide or a long chain of amino acids connected by peptide bonds. There are many functions of proteins. They can be enzymes, which speed up chemical reactions, structural proteins, such as hair, tendons, or ligaments, contractile proteins, such as muscle, defensive proteins, which are part of the immune system or antibodies, signal proteins, such as hormones, receptor proteins, which are usually found on cell surfaces, and transport proteins, which are found in eggs, like ovalbumin. There are four levels of protein structure. The primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure. The primary structure is the sequence of amino acids in the protein. The sequence of amino acids determines the ultimate shape of the protein. The secondary structure is short, regularly shaped areas of the polypeptide chain, such as the alpha helix or the beta pleated sheet, which are held together by H bonds. The tertiary structure is the overall 3D shape of one polypeptide chain. The quaternary structure is not found in all proteins, but it is the overall 3D shape when a protein is made of more than one polypeptide chain or subunit. For example, hemoglobin is made of four subunits, and it's made of two alpha helixes and two beta pleated sheets. Denaturation is when a protein loses its correct shape. The protein also loses its function when it loses its shape because shape determines function for proteins. Things that can denature protein are high temperature and extreme pH, but there are other things that can denature proteins as well. These charts show the denaturation of proteins. On this side is enzyme activity and on this side is temperature. This is the chart of the enzyme activity of the enzymes in a human body. The average human body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So the enzyme activity is the highest at 37 degrees because that is the average temperature and that's when the enzymes work best at 37 degrees Celsius. But as the temperature starts to increase, the enzyme activity goes down because the enzymes start to denature and they lose their shape and they can't work anymore. Similarly, in the stomach, the average pH is 3 and the enzyme activity is highest 
at the pH of 3. But as the pH increases, the enzyme activity go goes down and the proteins start to denature. And in blood, the average pH is 7. And the enzyme activity is the highest at the pH of 7. And as the pH starts to increase, enzyme activity decreases as the enzymes start to denature. Nucleic acids are the fourth type of macromolecule. The monomer of nucleic acids are nucleotides. The structure of nucleic acids is a 5-carbon sugar, such as ribose or deoxyribose, a nitrogen-containing base, such as adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, or uracil, and a phosphate group. There are three examples of nucleotides, DNA, RNA, and ATP. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Its structure is a double helix made of two strands of nucleotides held together by H bonds. Its function is it stores genetic information, and the information is in the sequence of nucleotides. RNA is ribonucleic acid. Its structure is a single strand of nucleotides. Its function is it carries information from DNA to be used for cellular processes. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Its structure is a single nucleotide with three phosphate groups. Its function is it holds chemical energy usable for cellular processes. These are the three examples of nucleotides.